All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call uh, to order the hybrid virtual planning commission meeting of November 5th, 2020. I'd like to remind everyone to please silence any electronic devices. For those who are attending uh, virtually, please mute your microphones while not speaking. At this time, I'd like to ask you to all please stand for a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Jamie Girardi. Here. Michael Cox. Here. Peter Hansel. Here. Roberto Saez. Here. Christopher Poole. Here. Chris. Here. And Chairman Charles Gray. Okay, <clears throat> well, the Planning Commission is appointed by the Board of County Commissioners and we meet twice monthly. The planning Commission serves as a local planning agency and the Planning Commission holds public hearings and transmits to the Board of County Commissioners recommendations on the comprehensive plan amendments, land development code amendments, rezonings and conditional use requests. The planning Commission is the final decision-making body for special exceptions, certain appeals, variance requests, and certain alternative standard requests. However, final decisions may be appealed to the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, under minutes, there will be no minutes read today or approved. Okay. So we'll be modifying those minutes just uh, for your response. Mr. Chair, Denise Hernandez, if you would just um, put a motion. I'd like to withdraw. I'd like to have a motion to withdraw the minutes, please. I'll make a motion to withdraw the minutes. Second. Amy. Okay, a motion made by Jamie Girardi and the second was by who? Chris Williams. By Chris Williams. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Roll call. Roll call vote. Okay. Jamie Girardi? Aye. Michael Cox? Aye. Peter Hansel? Aye. Christopher Poole? Aye. Chris Williams and Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. I'm sorry, they didn't mention my name. I can't hear Michael and Roberto very much. Yeah, they're very quiet. Uh, they got your microphones on. Hello, can you hear me? Roberto. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Michael, uh, try your mic again. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, you're not loud, but I can hear you. I, okay. I haven't, uh, I didn't hear the clerk mention my name. Yeah, did uh, you read Roberto's name, please? Roberto Saez. Aye. Okay. All right, we're all set then. So, uh, Denise, is there any public comment scheduled for uh, that's not on the agenda today? No, there is no public comment. For okay. Not All right, then. P uh, participants attending through the public comment kiosk, uh, those instructions, there's no point to go through those. We do, have a, we do have two participants who are at the public comment kiosk, but for IMP C10. Okay. Are there any applicants on that item? So participants attending, uh, attending through the public comment kiosk and WebEx participants, including the applicants who have pre-registered for the hybrid uh, virtual planning commission meeting will be notified by the county staff when they're permitted to speak. Applicants will be limited to five minutes and other participants 
will be limited to three minutes unless additional time is approved and it has not been. Participants attending through the public comment kiosk and WebEx participants must announce the following items before speaking and at the time they will be sworn in by the clerk. Their name, their address, their agenda item, <clears throat> or the agenda title item. Uh, then they will have their appropriate time to speak. After public comment, after public comment, kiosk and WebEx participants uh, will read on, into the public record comments, documents, PowerPoints, or videos that have been <coughs> identified by members of the public to be read out loud or played. The time limited to five minutes for applicants and three minutes for participants. We have six public hearing items on the consent agenda. And they will we'll, uh, go through the agenda items. And then uh, once we uh, finish the consent agenda, we'll vote on it in mass by roll call. Okay. Madam Clerk, you want to read proof of publication? The items were published in the Tampa Bay Times on October 21st, 2020. Okay. Yes, Denise, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Denise Fernandez, Planning and Development. We're going to, uh, we're, we're going to go out of order. Uh, first few, we're going to go in order, but I do want to direct you to PC9. I'm going to read PC9 together with the continuous. I think PC3 is a large scale comprehensive plan amendment. Really just passing in the notes. Proposed future land use amendment for Chapter 2, both future land use, including tax and bigger PHB revisions to court reserves, village separator provisions, and existing development approvals. That's PD 210002. It's a request for continuance to the to November 19, 2020, local planning agency, because you're sitting as a local planning agency on this one, at 1.30 p.m. in New Port Richie. All right. Do I hear a motion to continue? So moved to continue. Chris Williams. And do I have a second? Oh, second of Peter Hansel. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion of the motion? All in favor by roll call, say aye. Opposed, say no. Jamie Girardi? Aye. Michael Cox? Aye. Michael Cox? Peter aye. Hansel? Roberto Saez? Aye. Christopher Poole? Aye. Chris Williams? Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray? Aye. All right, thank you. Um, and there's no one here to speak on this one. No one's here to speak. Okay. So, do I hear a motion, please? To continue, I'll move to continue PC4. Second, Chris Poole. Okay, motion by Jamie Girardi, second by Chris Poole. All in favor of the motion, motion signify by saying aye by roll call or no. Jamie Girardi, aye. Michael Cox, aye. Peter Hansel, aye. Roberto Saez, aye. Christopher Poole, aye. Chris Williams? Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray? Aye. All the amendments PC 5 B2173. It's for Chelsea Acquisition LLC and Chelsea Acquisition 2 LLC for change in zoning from R4 High Density Residential District and C1 Neighborhood Commercial District to an MM2 Multiple Family Medium High Density sorry, District. Uh, this There is a request by the applicant to continue to the December 10th, 2020. Um, Planning Commission meeting at 1.30 in Dayton City. Okay, and there's no one to speak on this one? No one to speak on this item. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the continuance? So moved, Chris Williams. All right, we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second, Jamie Girardi. Okay, any further discussion of the motion? All right, then signify by saying aye or nay, or by roll call. Jamie Girardi? Aye. 
Michael Cox. Aye. Peter Hansel. Aye. Roberto Saez. Aye. Christopher Poole. Aye. Chris Williams. Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. Next, we're going to move on to PC9. PC9 is PD21C user remains a conditional use for Adventist Health System Sundell Healthcare Corporation for multiple family dwellings in a C2 general commercial district. The applicant has requested a continuance to the December 10th. 2020 planning mission meeting at 1.30 in Davidson. Okay, we have a for, uh, request for continuance. I'll make the motion. The record, uh, because this was not advertised as a continuance, there's no one on WebEx to speak on the matter, and there's no one at the kiosk on the matter either. Okay, and this continued to the Dade City meeting? Yes, 12 10 2020 planning commission meeting at 1.30 in Davidson. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve continuance. Okay, so I have a motion uh, to approve. I have a second. Second, Chris Williams. Okay, any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye by roll call. Jamie Girardi. Aye. Michael Cox. Aye. Peter Hansel. Aye. Roberto Saez. Aye. Christopher Poole. Aye. Chris Williams. Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. We're now going to move on to item PC7. PC6 is actually a land development code amendment. It's going to take some time, so let's go through our public hearing because we do have applicants present and um, we'll, we'll work through right the rest of the consent. So the following item on consent is PC7. It's a zone amendment. PDD 217502 in the name of First Pascal Service Corporation for a change in zoning from I-1 Light Industrial Park District to C-2 General Commercial District. It comes to you with a recommendation of approval. Okay, and that stays on consent? It's on consent. Okay. The applicant is virtually present. All right, does the applicant have any comment? There's no one here to object, so we you have questions for the applicant, the applicant can ask. Okay, are there any questions? I hear none, so move on. Okay. Do you, do you want me to move on to the next one? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you so much. The following item is PC8. It's PDD21, CD07. Research under the name of CEO Oil Auction Group for Public Auction in a C2 General Commercial District comes to you with a recommendation with approve, of approval with conditions as contained in the packet. The applicant is uh, virtually present, and we do not have anyone uh, on WebEx or at the kiosk to object them. All right. Uh, any questions from the dais? If not, do I hear a motion? Uh, is that the last one? That's the last one. Okay, so do I hear a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved, Chris Poole. I'll second it, Peter Hansel. Okay, any further discussion of the motion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye by roll call. Jamie Girardi. Aye. Michael Cox. Aye. Peter Hansel. Aye. Roberto Saez. Aye. Christopher Poole. Aye. Chris Williams. Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. Okay, so we're going to move on to the following item and not share my presentation. Okay, good, good afternoon. This is Christina Acosta from Planning and Development. 
The next item is PDD 21-7501 in the name of Charles Gilbert Tucker. The request is for a change in zoning from R1 rural residential, rural density residential district to an AR1 agricultural residential district. The property is located on the east side of Connor Drive, approximately 1,750 feet south of the intersection of Cypress Lane and Dupree Drive. The site contains approximately 5.46 acres, and the applicant proposes to develop the site in conformance with the AR1 Agricultural Residential District Standards for Development. And the surrounding area is characterized by residential uses. The future land use for the site is Res 6, residential six dwelling units per acre. And this is a look at the surrounding zoning. To the east side, you have the Dupree Lakes MPUD. To the west side of the site, you have um, all R1. And to the south, you have a mix of R1 and AR1. We can do the next slide. Thanks. And uh, the access to the site is from Connor Drive, actually dead ends just past the site. And this comes to you with a recommendation of approval. And I'm here for any questions you have. <clears throat> okay, are there uh, <clears throat> any questions from the guys? Chris? So I know there's, with some of the comment I've seen about, <clears throat> about Orange Grove and stuff like that, what can they not, and I don't even know what they're looking to do, but can they can they not do Orange Grove on their current zoning or pine trees or what? what's the limitations of their current zoning? What so it, the, go ahead. It is the, I can tell you it is, it's the intention of the applicant to rezone the property so he can do um, agricultural uses that would qualify him for the agricultural exemption. So under his current zoning, he can't do that. Okay. No. So I do want to mention, and um, we do have a letter in opposition to be read into the record, and the applicant is physically present at the kiosk. Um, so do, would you like me to read the letter first, or so that way the applicant can respond? Yeah, I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. So if someone can please um, set the time, this is about three minutes. So this. Um, I have it, Denise. Thank you uh, so De much. Denise, can I can I interrupt you just just for one moment? Yeah. Is there anyone present on WebEx to speak on this item? No, there isn't anyone present on WebEx. Okay. So yes, Ms. Alexander stated that if she would be present, she can state it, but she's she is not present on WebEx. So we're reading the letter. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you, Denise. Sure, no problem. Thank you so much. This is from Lizette Alexander, who lives on Connor Drive. Um, I will be out of town tomorrow during the hearing and wish to have this information read at the meeting in the event that I am unable to connect online during the session. The neighbors on King, King Lake have been advised that Mr. Charles Gilbert Tucker of Connor Drive has recently applied for rezoning his property from the current R1 residential to AR1 agricultural residential. R1 is a primary form of residential zoning cater, catering to second residences. Such zoning is considered more peaceful and desirable by owners and prospective buyers. A change to AR1 would allow commercial farming and agricultural activities, such as citrus groves, as well as other fruits, forestry, plant nurseries, truck farms, fish pools, animal feedlots, hatching and raising of poultry, production of eggs, raising of livestock, hogs, horses, cattle, sheep, etc. The former, the further, up, we further understand that once the land is rezoned, there is no oversight. Any and all items under AR1 would be permitted. My family and I are concerned about the ill effects that we would suffer if the rezoning is granted. These issues, these include, but are not limited to, what problems would the added stress of trees, livestock, and their runoffs have on the lake, wetlands, or the aquifer? Animal waste, pesticides, and use of fertilizers would most assuredly impact the water the quality of all three. Neighbors on the lake just spent approximately $50,000 collectively treating our lake for hydrilia after working closely with the appropriate environmental agents. If this rezoning is approved, our efforts and sacrifice would be all for naught. What effect would there be from the planting of a grove? The land in question can sustain approximately 545 trees. Citrus laden trucks could tear up the road. Commercialization would bring additional people traffic down the cul de sac. 
what will the effect on the wetlands that form the suffer property? Our neighborhood is made up of residential single family homes. The preponderance of the properties on the lake are zoned R1. We are hardworking people who care about our land and our neighborhood and are convinced that change to the zoning as requested would have negative consequences for us all. We respectfully ask that you disapprove the request for rezoning. Thank you. Serious matter. We'll name him Lizette Alexander. <clears throat> okay, well, we can't have to ask any questions because they're not available. Well, that's true, but I'd like to ask some questions if yeah, I may. I have some questions too, sir. Okay. Um, so the applicant is also available, so perhaps, you know, he's at the, at the kiosk. Um, do you want to have the applicants respond, respond first yeah, and then ask questions? Yeah. Well, it might be helpful if we, if I ask the questions first before the applicants All right. can respond. It's fine with me, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I had several questions that I have a shorter letter from uh, Miss Alexandria, and she brought up the cost of maintaining the road in her document to to us. And and on the first page of the uh, agenda memo, it talks about that road being maintained uh, by the county. Is that going to be an issue down the road if this uh, because with agricultural activities going on, heavier equipment may come in? So that's one question in the road. And the second, I think she has a legitimate complaint here regarding uh, chemical use. Um, I'm not a farmer, nor do I pretend to be one in any fashion or manner, but I do know that from common knowledge that agricultural business does use a, an enormous amount of chemicals. And she brings up the fact that they, it, in this letter that they, they do have uh, a concern regarding, I guess there's some streams because she refers well the aquifer which is the underground water but th there must be some type of runoff system or some type of watering in that area when i pull up on the map the map that i pulled up on uh, google it shows some type of i think some small streams in there if there if i can even use that term i don't think they're that that large but that's my main concern is the chemical use in going into the water system there and who maintains the road other than the county? Is there going to be a, a, a cost, additional burden to the residents in this area? So those are two areas I'm concerned about. Yep. Right, so so definitely Connor Drive is a county, Pasco County maintained road. Um, in terms of repaving it or any of that, that's, you know, usually that's done through a paving assessment. Cost sharing, okay. Um, my understanding and from driving down the road, the road is like the actual pavement of the roads is in, in good condition. It's not uh, pothole ridden or uh, depressions and things like that. It's, it's not a very wide road, certainly towards the end, but um, the road is uh, generally in good condition. Well, in her, in her document that I have, it says it's been repaved several times and it's considerable expense. I'm not sure what the term or what she means by considerable expense, but when was the last time was it paved and is there is it expensive to repay the like road that the third party transportation folks can answer that question, but we can certainly look that up as to when the last time it went through paving assessment. Then what about chemicals? The chemicals, I think we can ask the applicant that okay. question. Perhaps. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so okay. can we hear from the applicants? We have one other. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Chris has some questions. Yeah. Yeah, it just it seems to me that this this request is out of context for the for the area and the, the zoning that's surrounding the area there. Um, you know, I see in the to follow up on Chris's point, I do see in the in the public comment that we received, there's it's like some conflicting information. It seems like one one uh resident suggests that there's gonna be pine trees that can be planted there versus orange grove. So I think you know information from the applicant is their their planned uses and then um, what they what they plan to do in the future with that would be would be very helpful. So if we can get the applicant at the kiosk, please. Good afternoon. Would you please would you please state your name and address for the record? And uh, you need to be sworn in as well. Charles Gilbert Tucker, 5102 Connor Drive, Land Lakes, Florida. Sir, could you raise your right hand for me? 
Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth to help you, God? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Chris, why don't you go ahead with your questions too? We can get them all maybe addressed at one time. Sure. Well, I, uh, my question is in regards to the requesting is out of context for the for the area where this uh, this property is located. So I see in some of the pub, public uh, comment that was received by the uh, planning commission that there's uh, disagreement in the the future use of the property, whether it's going to be planted for pine trees or orange grove or the like. So, sir, could you clarify your your planned use of the property going forward? Yes, sir. Uh... A lot of a lot of the neighbors fears and all see uh, I'm a third generation citrus grower and my grandfather and, and my dad and I we've owned this property for over 70 years now and which we sold out in 2005 to Beezer home which is um, Dupree Lakes and at that time we had 640 acres there and 350 acres of it were in orange grove and we were producing anywhere from 100,000 uh, to 150,000 boxes of juice oranges every year going to Tropicana. But when we sold out and sold the Beezer Homes, uh, we this piece of land that I live on was a section that we separated from that 644 acres that I kept. And I kept the amount enough for to do this in the proceedings uh, down the road uh, like that there to, to uh, put it back in agriculture. I have no desire of, I don't have the land to get back into the commercial business like we had way back there and through all those years of, of grove like that there. I don't have, there's not enough upland to put back in orange grove. I'm only interested in putting it back into pine trees like it was once before and uh, then uh, uh, building me a shed there and, uh, um, you know, a few um, other kinds of trees, oak trees, this, that, and the other. There's a canal that borders the north side of my property that uh, possibly lined with uh, cypress trees to help erosion uh, against erosion there and all like that there. So, uh, and... I did, a, years ago, we did a, a video for the Department of Agriculture, which is accessible through the Extension Office uh, with IFAS and all on pesticides and building buffers from getting in any of our wetlands or lakes that we had in the grove, which is all now Dupree Lakes. Years ago, my grandfather had the Armored Corps engineers come in there and had all of that connected and we were able to maintain keep any pesticides or whatever out of those wetlands or anything else but i have no desire to do that I, or anything like that i just want to put it back in sun and agriculture and pine trees i have i'm a single full-time single father with two sons that are just 15 and 20 years old and i want them to my youngest one is uh, sophomore Atlanta Lakes High School. He's joined the uh, Future Farmers Association there with the school. And uh, I'm just wanting to assure that, you know, um, oh, if he, he has something, a project to do with the Future Farmers there, one well, of his last three years in school in there, he's allowed to do it there and stuff. Besides that, I want to plant the pine trees. I talked to one of the neighbors the other night. He said, I'd sure like to see it back in the pine trees the way it was before. So this about in the, the cost of the roads, we endured the cost of the road for almost a mile because the first section was Connor Drive and then the second section was Dupree, which circles around there. And our family had to pay for the road because our property bordered the east side of all those roads around there. So we, we um, participated in that also uh, like that there, but I have no intentions of doing, I, I have deer sleep outside my bedroom window and I, I want to keep the deer there. I, I don't want, you know, I'm just trying to, 
that land, Pasco County, see, that land was separated from the 700 acres. Okay, I can't separate it no more. You can only split a piece of land in Pasco County one time. So I can't sell it. I'm mowing it regularly. I keep it mowed and, and all like that there. And I would just like to, to be able to uh, put it back in trees and and um, get uh, be able to qualify for the tax break on it. I have no no plans of nothing else. So so understanding that, so you have no no desire to commercial use or commercial enterprise related to that. It seems like your neighbors are, are confused with, with your plan um, as to how you're going to use the property. But that being said, it, it, it you know, not having the commercial aspect to the, to the project certainly makes it uh, uh, more viable, I guess, I guess to me as a planning commissioner to, to approve this. But, um, you know, I, I think there is some miscommunication, I guess, with, with your neighbors. Um, that being said, would you be interested in, in, I don't know if I can ask this, Denise, but some sort of consent order related to, to the, the, the motion? Could we could we uh, commit that to a non-commercial use uh, or, or something of that sort? Would that be a, an opportunity? Yes, exactly, yep. So, Planning Commission, this is David Goldstein. That would have to be in the form of a deed restriction offered by the applicant. This is not a type of zoning that you can condition. So if the applicant is willing to, to offer up a deed restriction that limits this to non, a non-commercial farming operation, that would be up to the applicant to offer that up. All right, thank you, David. So uh, if I could, if I could, we could ask the applicant, is he willing to uh, proceed to a uh, deed restriction? I'm, may I, can I, may I come in and say something? I am uh, working with excuse, the applicant. Excuse me, you're gonna have to gonna will, come up and give your excuse, name, address. My name, and, uh, my, name is, my name is Joe Seidel. I live at 20955 Lake Thomas Road in Lanza Lakes. Okay, um, and who so was born? Swear. Uh, I swear. Do you to, swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth to help you God? Yes. Okay. Um, you don't know me. I've lived in Land Lakes for 38 years. Charlie has been my neighbor. I knew his grandfather I, as I had, as I knew his father, I knew Charlie. I'm a commercial real estate agent. I started out in farmland. I come from a farm area, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So ag is kind of a little bit in my blood. I've lived in a neighborhood of Land Lakes, like I said, for 38 years. I watched a citrus grove next door turn into a subdivision. I watched a, a pine forest tree farm across the street turn into a subdivision. Uh, Mr. Tucker here is has been a friend of mine for 30 plus years. I believe him when he says that he will do a non-commercial use. I guess the question I would have, I'm trying to help Mr. Tucker. He's asked me to help him. In the idea of let's make this non-commercial, having a tree farm, he's going to sell the pines. Is that considered commercial? Uh, I don't think it's his. He can tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think it is his intention to run a truck farm out of there to uh, make it, a, as he said, he's not going to make it a grove. We've seen Pasco County, as you well know, was a predominantly agricultural area was one of the best citrus growing areas in the state. Part of the reason is because of the soils. We can produce fruit here from faster than just about any, any other place in the state, which is hard to believe, but it's true. Unfortunately, with freezes and greening, citrus industry is gone. And it's not coming back anytime soon, as you well know. Uh, so Mr. Tucker's not trying to do that. I understand the neighbor's objections. If I was living on that street, those things would come, they would cross my mind as well. As far as him restricting it to commercial uses, again, if it's saying that you can plant pines, that's not a commercial use. Uh, yeah, if we're saying you can't plant your pine trees and you can't have a, you know, I have beautiful citrus in my own yard. You know, I had half a dozen. I had one tree that had five different varieties of fruit on it for 40 years. You know, we grafted it on there. All that's gone. So. 
I guess the question, Mr. Goldstein, would be, if he says no commercial, does that mean he can't have? Well, so so yeah, I tend to agree with the applicant um, that the term commercial is a little bit ambiguous because if he sells one tree, arguably that's commercial. I think if the planning commission, if if your desire is to limit it to a pine tree farm, you could ask for a deed restriction that limits it to a pine tree farm. Um, or if your desire is to limit the use of pesticides on the land, then you could ask for a deed restriction that limits the use of pesticides. But the problem with the phrase commercial is it, it I think we may have issues if he goes to sell one tree and then that arguably that's a commercial operation. So I think the motion maker or the, or the, the planning commission member that has concerns probably needs to clarify whether your issue is trying to limit it to just pine trees or limit the use of pesticides. You probably, we need some clarity as to what your real goal is. Okay. Uh, Chris, you want to clarify your thinking on that? Well, I think, you know, in, in, in my mind, an orange grove is a completely different thing than a pine tree farm. So an orange grove is a commercial enterprise that's going to, uh, there's going to be pesticide application. There's going to be, uh, you know, water requirements for for watering the groves and like to to keep it viable and the like. So I think there's, that's kind of where my mind goes on the on a commercial enterprise. I think if if we're talking about a pine tree farm, and that that was my my reason for the question to the applicant to see if that's the case because I think in my mind that's a completely different different scenario as far as an agriculture use for the property goes, and I would be inclined to to support that sort of use. If we said a non-commercial uh, citrus grove, or, or yeah, no commercial citrus grove. Okay, so is the applicant asking to limit it to a pine tree farm or a non-commercial citrus grove? Is that what you're asking? I'm not sure if I understand the request. Yeah, I guess the thing is, he still wants to have a couple of citrus trees, and and to but. But to say we'll restrict it to a non-commercial citrus grove. It's not a citrus, it's not a commercial grove operation. But if he limited it strictly to pine trees and then he grows a half a dozen citrus trees for his family and friends, are we gonna be back here later on? So so yeah. So my recommendation, if that's your intent, would be to limit it to a Pine tree farm or a non or a non commercial farming operation. So your pine tree farm, you'd be able to sell the pine trees, but any other form of farming you wouldn't be able to sell. It would just be for personal use. Right. Right. Yeah. So I is that accept, is that acceptable to the applicant? Yes, sir. Hey, are you willing to enter into a deed restriction that limit makes that limitation? Okay, would that address the planning commission's concerns? Uh, I, I think it addresses my concerns. Anything? It addresses my too, yes, sir. He, you okay? I'm a little confused. Are you saying limit? He he wants to grow some he wants to plant trees pine trees, and if he wants pine to plant trees, pine trees he's limited trees to just the number for of his personal use. For personal use, say no more, not to exceed more than ten orange trees. Oh, I don't like that. Number. De Denise, okay. well, I don't. It's Jamie Girardi. Can I ask a question? If, if if the applicant wanted to plant, is there a limit on the number of pine trees and citrus trees he could plant on his property as it's zoned currently? The really the issue comes down to being able to get the tax benefit right. of going to AR. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Mr. Cherry. Yes. It's Michael Cox. Um, so I understand everybody's concern, um, but reality, the, the fact is, this is like a not even a five and a half acre piece of land. If it was a 50 acre piece of land, I could understand going through all those gyrations of uh, putting deed restrictions on it, but it's a small piece of land. And this is, I think, a first for me, someone opposing um, someone wanting to do a zoning change because they want to plant trees. So, I mean, I personally think it's fine the way it is and we should approve it. All right. 
So I just want to make sure we're clear though, and I'm going to ask Denise a question. What, as we keep talking about the planting of trees, are there other types of agricultural operations that are allowed in AR1 that are not planting of trees, such as far chickens, poultry, uh, those types of operations? Uh, Denise, on the PowerPoint, there's a there's a slide included at the end that has all the uses of AR1, if you want to put it up. So, so I just wanted to be clear. That's why I wanted this to be pulled up because I, I want you to understand that AR1 allows more than just the planting of trees. It does allow swine, a fowl, small animals. Um, so it, this isn't just a tree issue. I just wanted to make sure we're clear. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think that's that's why your idea of you know, limited to non-commercial non uses is probably the best the best way to put it, rather than limited number of trees. But um, I'm open to. I just think. Well, I sort of think like Mike does. You know, <laughs> it's hard to turn down somebody that wants to plant trees. You know, and that and when I looked at the aerial, it looks like the that five acres is across the street from the lake. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So it I don't think anything would run off from that into the lake directly unless I'm unless I can't see something that's there. But anyway, I'm I'm open to a motion if uh, unless you unless any of you have more questions. Mr. Chairman, this is Michael Cox. I'll move for approval. I'll second the approval. Peter I just want to, I just want to clarify get the is that with the assumption of the deed restriction that the applicant no. Or, or without it? No. Without That's it. recommended by staff. So, so assuming no deed restriction. Correct. That's correct. We've already clarified that he can actually plant as many trees as he wants there right now, right? So, okay. So we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? All in favor, signify by roll call, aye or nay. Jamie Girardi. Aye. Michael Cox. Aye. Peter Hansel. Aye. Roberto Size. Aye. Christopher Poole. Nay. Chris Williams. Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. Okay, that is in your packet. Thank you so much. I, I apologize. No
um, horizontal round table and vertical round table group. So um, we're going to go over some of them are very, very specific, uh, but we'll go over each and every single section. So we're making amendments to chapter 300 procedures, table 303-5, required public hearings and development approvals. The reason for that change is because we're adding unified sign plans uh, to go to the, which go to the planning commission and the board of county commissioners. It's not anything new, it's just something that wasn't in that table for um, development approval applications. We're also adding the waiver of specific distance of a thousand feet for on-premises consumption for alcoholic beverages uh, to the required public hearing table. Again, these are not new processes. These are processes that have always existed. It's just wasn't in the general state. Following change is 300 procedures, 304-1, required public notice for development approval applications. Um, as we go through this, uh, you'll, you will see that one of, the, one of the big changes that we've made to the code is that you will no longer see conditional uses for the sale of alcoholic beverages. These will be done through administrative approval. It's something that the Board of County Commissioners has wanted us to do for a long time. We've now made some changes to the code, so you're going to see this as a recurring theme throughout based on other change. Once you change a part of the code, you have to change other parts of the code. So basically now, the required public notice for development, appro development approval applications is going to include the administrative use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages, where that you have to post, post, post the item. Also, it adds a unified sign plan where it has to be mailed, published, and posted. It adds the waiver of the specific distance of 1,000 feet for the sale of alcoholic beverages to be mailed and posted. Um, it also clarifies we have it, we have wireless communications facilities called out as wireless facilities. There were some co some uh, legislative changes in 2017. That name was changed to wireless communication facilities. Our code still says wireless facilities. Again, um, you're going to see this theme throughout. It's, these are minor, most of them are minor modifications. So um, again, after chapter 300 procedures, section 305, neighborhood meeting. Changes the name of wireless facilities again to wireless communications facilities. This is consistent with the changes that were made um, in Land Development Code Amendment 30 and for uh, changes that were made in the 2017 legislative session. Chapter 300 Procedures, Section 306, Neighborhood Notice. It clarifies that alternative standards other than those in 407.5C and 407.5D. Uh, the notice for those can also be provided in conjunction or in connection with other notices which can include PSP or PEP. The way that it's written right now, it, it's very confusing to staff and it's very confusing to our applicants where the applicant is saying, oh my God, do I have to notice this separately? And it doesn't necessarily have to be noticed separately. It can be noticed in conjunction with the PSP or the PDP or the mass grading or whatever other um, process that the applicant may be going through. Chapter 400, permit types and applications. And please stop me if you have any questions. I apologize. I tend to be very fast and I, and I realize that. So please stop me. stop me if you have any questions. I'm very happy to answer them. Chapter 400, permit types and applications, section 402.3F, conditional uses, required standards. It removes the section of the thousand foot from places of religious worship, pre K through 12th grade, public and private schools and county parks. It moves all that, and it's, you know, you're going to see it's, it's going to be a theme throughout. This is now all going to be consolidated in 402, 405.2.D. It doesn't re, it doesn't remove the requirement. It just consolidates it into one section. So alcohol will be called out as a whole in one in one section, which is in 402, 405.2.D. All right, Chapter 400 Permit Types and Applications, Section 402.3.H, C. And this is the conditional use section. So again, this section has language regarding alcohol. All that language, it's not going away. It's just moving to 402.5.D, administrative use permits for the sale of alcoholic beverages. Chapter 400, permit types and applications, section 402.3.I, enforcement. There's a Scribner's error. The, the actual, it should be calling out 402.4.J, not 402.4.I. Chapter 400, Permit Types and Applications, Section 402.4.J, Replication of Special Exception and Conditional Uses. We're renaming the section because we now have 
the administrative use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages, which is also revocable. So we're just adding that the, the name is changing to um, special revocation of special and conditional uses and administrative use permits for the sale of alcoholic beverages. Section 402.5.8.1, mobile food operations. This is as a result of preemption language in um, Florida statute of 2020. Um, so basically it clarifies that um, registration is no longer required for um, mobile food operations. And we, there was also a, a Scribner's error from the time that we uh, brought the 402.5.8.1, which is mobile food operations. It clarifies the language on construction sites. So those are two changes to make to that. Here's where we start talking about meat. Section 402.5.D, administrative use permits for the sale of alcoholic beverages. This creates that new section. It brings all the other items in from the other sections into this section. Um, which includes uh, the waiver information is moved. Uh, now the planning commission is going to be the decision making body on the waiver. So you may hear waivers from time to time where there might be an alcoholic beverage business establishment wanting to um, open within less than a thousand feet as the crow flies from a, um, a county park, a place of religious worship, or a pre-K through 12th grade um, private or public school. So that the waiver was previous, those were previously um, heard and um, the final action was made by the Board of County Commissioners, that's now going to planning commission. So it also moves if all the items that were in 530.14, which used to be called, or is called the applicability of this code, code to the sale of alcoholic beverages, again, Everything is in one section. It moves it to 42.5.D. Um, okay, uh, something else that 42.5.D clarifies. We did see that throughout the code there were mentions of church, places of worship, schools, and it wasn't clarified. So what we did is that you know a church is a place of belief for religious worship, so is so are some other things. So that the place of religious worship is a defined term in our land development code so we're using that term throughout place of religious worship also we wanted to clarify this that a school that means a pre-k through 12th grade public or private school and we wanted to clarify that a park means a county park so it's more clear it's it's clearer for the person who's reviewing it and it's clearer for um our, our customers as well it also adds an enforcement section um, which is uh, which was in another location in the code, but enforcement for the administrative use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages. So, following section 406.5.I, right of way use permit bond requirement, it, um, the maintenance guarantee is moved from one year to 36 months. In speaking with the folks um, at project management and engineering inspections, that's what that's what's done in the field 36 months. So that, that change is, is being made to the code. So that way it follows current practice. Section 503.3 AC Agricultural District Conditional Use. This um, this section it's it's just basically at specific distance waiver language for conditional use. So as you may recall, we processed at one point a conditional use um, in conjunction with an, an amusement facility. It just basically sets states unless a specific distance limitation waiver is approved. They can't, they, you can't sell within a thousand feet of a place of religious worship, K through 12, public or private school, so on and so forth. This is the only place that those, they, there will still be a conditional use for alcohol beverages because there's other things to take into consideration. This is gonna be in an AC district, hours, hours of operation and different things like that. So the conditional use will still be in conjunction with the operation of an amusement facility. So section 511 RMH, which is the mobile park district. And um, this, so when the board asked us to allow site built homes in RMH, it was really for existing properties that were zoned RMH. So this basically clarifies that single family detached homes on individual lots are only permitted on parcels zoned RMH prior to December 8th, 2020. 
The reason why we stated December 8th, 2020 is because that will be the adoption date of, of this item. Um, that way you will not, you will no longer see um, applications for RMH with deed restrictions stating that they're not gonna have mobile homes. So that's not the reason for RMH. The reason for RMH is existing RMH laws. So it's an unintended consequence of Land Development Code Amendment 27, which was in 2017 or so. The following section, and it's it's really interesting because a lot of the things that are going to continue to come about are things that have that were first presented to the Planning Commission. So Section 517, R4 High Density Residential District. I don't know if you recall, in January of this year, we brought forward a variance where an R4 subdivision. Uh, was reducing their side setbacks to five feet. And we explained that this is something we were gonna change in the code because there are standards in uh, 902.2.8.2.B for lot drainage for lots that have less than a seven and a half foot side setback. So we're basically um, making, bringing that change as we stated in January when we brought you that variance. So it allows a setback to be reduced to no less than five feet for our four subdivisions that are developed after December 8th, 2020. Again, that's going to be the adoption date of this. So as long as they meet the standards in 92.2.K.2.B lot drainage, which are for lots less than seven and a half with less than seven, seven and a half foot side setbacks. Additionally, um, it prohibits the use of a side entry walkway. And it, that's consistent with that variance that we brought forward to you also, because one of the conditions on that variance is that they were not going to put a, a side entry walkway in the five foot setback. Section 522 Connected City MPD. This one just basically explains in the Connected City MPD, it only allows uh, um, the uh, applicant to use the green light process currently. So now this will allow uh, the applicant to also use the other review processes, not just the green light process. So it gives um, it, it gives further um, allowances to the applicant to use other processes that are not necessarily the green light process. They can use the regular review process in Connected City. Section 521C1 Neighborhood Commercial Districts, it adds fitness centers as permitted principal uses. So like, as you drive around Pasco, you'll see that there are gyms in C1, but that's not a permitted use in C1. So it's just, it, it, that is a neighborhood commercial use, that's the use of a gym. So we, we add that as a, as a permitted principal use. 525.525C1 Neighborhood Commercial, Again, you're going to see this as a as a theme throughout. It adds the sale of alcoholic beverages as a permitted principal use. There are no longer conditional uses. That's stricken out, subject to the um, the an administrative use permit for the sale of alcoholic beverages. So it'll stay that's subject to compliance with 402.5.D. Section 526 C2 General Commercial. This one, it clarifies when we uh, worked on Land Development Code Amendment 25, we've seen that there were a lot of contractor's offices throughout the county. And we added contractor's office as a principal permitted use in C2, because that's where they were going in. It was only allowed in C3 back, back then. But in error, as a Scrivener's error, it's the, the use is actually called contractor's office and storage. It still has a development standard that everything has to be screened from view, uh, there has to be um, buffering, but we, we're just adding the word and storage to the use. So it's, it's, a, it's a Scrivener's error. 526 C2, it adds the sale of alcoholic beverages as a, as a permitted principal use. Again, we'll see the common theme throughout, strikes conditional use, adds it as a, a principal permitted use. C3 527, uh, commercial light manufacturing, ditto, adds the sale of alcoholic beverages as a permitted principal use. Section 528, I-1, Land Industrial Park District, again, adds sale of alcoholic beverages as a permitted principal use. Section 529, I-2, General Industrial Park District, that section specifically states that unless otherwise stated in this code, all um, permitted uses and special exception uses in I-1, well, I-1 has no special exception uses, so we're striking through the word special exception uses because it's Scrivener's error again. Section 530, Supplemental Regulations, 530.14, Applicability of this Code to the Sale of Alcoholic Beverages. It strikes and reserves a section. So in other words, as I stated, everything in that section is going into 402.5.D, but the section is just reserved. So if we want to use a section for another purpose in the future, it just strikes and reserves a section. 
Section 530, here's another thing that came to the Planning Commission. So you guys are the trailblazers on all this. Section 530, Supplemental Regulations, 530.15, Fraternal Lodges and Social and Recreational Clubs. I don't know if you recall earlier this year, we had um, the, uh, uh, the, I don't know if it was the Eagles, one of the recreation, one of the social and recreational vehicle clubs in a C2 district requiring to have a 50 foot setback. Well, why is that? I mean, they're, it's, it's, it's a commercial district. So basically what we're doing is that we're clarifying that the per performance standards for that section, um, if they're in PO2, C1, C2, C3, or MQDs that are designated that way, that they, they follow the standards for those districts. So a 25 foot set front set back if it's C2, you know, so on and so forth, and not have to meet those, those uh, performance standards that are listed on there that are very antiquated, but they do make sense for an, a, uh, a fraternal lot that may be going in an AR uh, district. So again, that's another um, variance that was brought to the planning commission and we told you we would be changing the code. So here we are changing the code. Most of these are in a shopping center anyway, so it just doesn't make sense to make them meet those sections. Okay, so section 530, again, the um, continuing on with the fraternal lodges. Um, back then when this section was written many, many years ago, we didn't have a landscape ordinance. So all, I just, we're basically crossing out the landscaping and buffering that's telling us that needs to be done, which is less than what the landscape ordinance asks. And we're just basically stating um, in accordance with 905.2 and with the with the project being considered a commercial project. That way, if it's commercial to residential, there's a, there's a significant buffer. Following item is chapter 700, subdivision and planning standards. Again, this is a bit of uh, Springer's error when um, the Board of County Commissioners adopted the concept of a flat NI. So now there's four types of flats. So the section says there's three, there's four. So Section 901.1 transportation corridor spacing. It removes um, 901.2.I dedication waiver from relief procedures. The section is no longer used, so it's stricken through. 901.2 transportation corridor management. It removes a requirement for interim uses to obtain approval by the Planning Commission. It combines the interim use sections, so it groups them all together. Right now, the sections are split into uh, not related to a primary use, not related to, to a primary use. They're all put together. Additionally, we remove the phrase in residential zones from the list of permitted interim uses. For, so landscaping can be an interim permitted, um, can be an interim use as a, an alternative standard in a non-residential or residential zone. So it clarifies, also it clarifies a discontinued date for interim uses as the beginning of the fiscal year in which monies for acquisition of right of way or construction within the transportation corridor are first programmed by either the county in year one of the county's five-year CIP or year one of the FDOT five-year TIP. Again, combined, since those two sections are being combined, the conditions for interim uses are also being combined. It removes 901.2J as we've heard before, and it renames it to 901.2I. And um, the dedicate then there's a dedication. Of, it's re it renames it, and now it's called 901.2I dedication or proportionality. Sorry about that. Section 901.2 transportation corridor management. Again, 901.2I dedication waiver is stricken in its entirety and 901.2.I becomes dedication or proportionality, as I stated before. Following 901.2 transportation corridor management, section 901.2.K waivers administrative variances is renamed to 901.2J administrative variances as waivers are no longer processed. Section 905.2 landscaping and buffering, it just adds and or to the landscape requirements for terminal islands. Currently, it just uses the term and, so we want the person to be able to do or, because otherwise you have to put all these things into the landscape island, and that makes no sense. 905.2 landscaping and buffering. Okay, I told you that already. 905.2.D, this one is really interesting. It's, it's a true scripture error. So we have an actual table that basically states 
that for lots that are less than 6,000 square feet, you need one tree. Well, what about if the lot is 6,000 square feet? It excludes it. So now the table will say lots 6,000 square feet or less. So it includes 6,000 square feet. All right. So 905.2.D.8, landscaping and buffering specific planting requirements, specific standards. Clarifies that the minimum number of trees on the lot can be counted towards the minimum number of replacement inches and the minimum caliber and height for, re for counting replacement inches. As I'm told by my colleagues, this is very difficult without a clarification. It's difficult for both the people who are uh, working on projects and are, um, you know, Submitting information, and it's also difficult for the technicians to review it. So this one this provides uh, greater clarity. Section 905.2.D.4, landscaping and buffering building perimeters. It consolidates the term apartment, condominium, and townhomes, townhome into the term multifamily. Section 1003, gates, fences, and walls. It clarifies that governmental exemption in the section, and it's for for gates, fences, and wall walls that are owned or erected by Pasco County or any state or federal government agency. Right now it just says government agency, so it's not clear. Section 1101, vehicle dealerships. It clarifies the applicability section and removes a statement regarding locations that cannot meet the 75 foot buffer. In this way, now this be on an alternative standard can be applied for. Section 1102, large scale commercial design standards. There's, uh, there's some issue. The intent and purpose section has some mentions to compliant policies that are no longer in Section 1105 sets self storage facilities. The map that's included in there, there's a scrivener's error, it includes Ridge Road as a corridor, and Ridge Road is not one of the corridors, so it removes Ridge Road. Section 1204.2 non conforming lots. It provides guidance in determining an equitable front and rear setback. So right now it just says that as determined equitable by the zoning administrator, but in the change, it basically states, this is how you, you look, you can look 200 feet and look at all others. So it's 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 easier to to, uh, to deal with 12.4.2 uh, with the, the way that the changes have been made. Appendix A definitions. Airport facility definition, there is a, it, it erroneously can also contain the definition of airport obstruction. So we're just deleting that, that sentence. And then also um, alcoholic beverage business establishment definition, we need to uh, delete the reference to chapter 500 because it's no longer in chapter 500. It's now in formal 2.5.2. So thank you so much for listening. Um, it's, I know it's a lot of changes, so we are asking that you find the proposed ordinance consistent with the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan and recommend approval of the ordinance to the Board of County Commissioners. I am here for any questions. This will be going to the Board of County Commissioners for first reading on November 17th at 1, November 15th, I'm sorry, at 1.30 in Dade City and for adoption on December 8th, 20 at 1.30 in Newport Ridge. Denise, on that section 1101, yes. um, can you clarify for me what that means about the 75 foot buffer? Sure. So Basically, um, in section 1101, we're just trying to find the, the map. Is the exact language that's used in the section. So the okay. section talks about that there are these, these different corridors. There's transit corridors, there's redevelopment corridors. There are all these different corridors, and Ridge Road was inadvertently um, included as one of the corridors, and it's not a corridor. So basically, the, the map is entitled North 41 East 52 Redevelopment and Transit Corridor Map. So the, the map incorrectly listed Ridge Road as one of those, and it should not have listed Ridge Road. So Ridge Road is off that, that map. Okay, so um, is US 19 on that map? But what, what is the 75 feet from where? What's Where's the buffer? 75 feet is for, for that's a different section. 75 feet is for, um, for the set, the buffer requirements between um, uh, 
um, vehicle dealerships and residential property. That's that's a, a different session. Okay, so that's remaining the same. No, so basically the way that the code reads now, that's in the, the auto dealership ordinance. So the, the way the code reads now is that um, places that cannot meet the 75 foot buffer cannot be can, cannot be used. So it doesn't give the applicant or the the, um, the owner the possibility of applying for a um, alternative standard. So by striking that section out, it just basically uh, allows a person to. You still have to be the 75 foot buffer. But it doesn't. It says places that cannot meet the seventy-five foot buffer. So we're just trying striking that part out. The places that cannot meet the seventy-five foot buffer. Okay. So there's no appeal there. Is that your, is that what you're saying? Correct. As it is right now, there's no appeal. It's just the 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 code is prohibitive. There's no appeal at this point. Then someone can apply for an alternative standard. Let's say that the alternative standard is not granted. They can appeal. The, alter, the, the non granting of the alternative standard or vice versa. If the alternative standard is granted, then they can, you know. Okay, so they can apply for an alternative standard. Yeah. Okay. I do want to also say that um, our, uh, our colleagues in um, current planning are also working with the industry to, um, to, uh, to make some modifications to the landscape section. Um, so I think that um, eventually what's going to happen is that there's going to be a specific type of buffer for auto dealers. That is more, it's not the, the 75 foot necessarily. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So the, Denise, the thousand foot buffer for alcohol sales from a school. Yes. So you said something about administratively decided or? No, no, no. Um, the, the waiver is an oh, actual right. public hearing. Okay. So if the and the waiver is going to come and yeah. answers the question or checks the box or as we verify it, we find that it's a thousand feet from a place of religious worship, a K through 12 public or private school or county park, then we tell them, well, you have to apply for a waiver and the waiver is a public hearing. Okay. And that comes, and that's going to come to here now. It would have to come to the planning commission. Right. Yes. Okay. And just to be very clear, also that is for the places that do consumption on premises. Right, right. Like your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If not, I'll hear a motion to adjourn. No, you have to. How about a motion to approve? approve? <laughs> Jamie, you're already on the oh, motion sorry. to approve. I'll second. I'll second Chris. Ford. I thought. I thought. I thought you already approved it. <laughs> Just approved it. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Chris Poole did. I second it. Oh, okay. It was a good try, though, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Any further discussion? Thanks for your work, Chris. I think we've already had the discussion. All in favor? Signify by roll call. Jamie Girardi. Aye. Michael Cox. Aye. Peter Hansel. Aye. Roberto Saez. Aye. Aye. Christopher Pohl. Aye. Chris Williams. Aye. And Chairman Charles Gray. Aye. Now we can get out of here, huh? <laughs> okay. Is there a motion, Jamie? I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> a motion? Do you have a second? I second. second. Chris Pohl. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> okay. We're out of here. Thank you. Thank you.